Joining us now from Helsinki is Oli Ren, yeah, chairman of FIFA's COVID relief fund steering committee. Plus, he's also the governor of the Bank of Finland. And former England goalkeeper David James, who is battling to save grassroots football from collapse. Yeah, he joins us from Welland Garden City in Hertfordshire. To both of you, I say thank you very much for joining us. Great to see you both. Hey, Ollie, let's start with you, because apart from a big job running the Bank of uh, Finland in a time of well, global economic crisis, if you will, you're also... Uh, in charge of FIFA's campaign to, I guess, help uh, football survive the crisis. I've got to ask you, which one's the tougher job at the moment? Both are indeed uh, very tough jobs, uh, and uh, survival of uh, football is uh, at stake, and uh, that's why FIFA is uh, engaged and committed uh, to support uh, football, the football economy, the football community, by up to one and a half billion US dollars uh, mm. and uh, it's very important uh, that we also support uh, grassroots football, club football and uh, I think uh, David James uh, is uh, engaged uh, in a very extremely valuable mission. He's fighting the right course uh, to support uh, grassroots and uh, club football. That's really the heart and soul of uh, of uh, mm. football and the football community. Indeed it is and on that note David, I mean how worried are you about grassroots football? Because your um, state of play report, phew, it, it paints a really bleak picture, right? I mean, these football clubs suffering incomes that have almost halved many, and many clubs may have to well, face closure. Absolutely, Aaron. I mean, I didn't realise how bad it was until uh, Utilities had put their report together. Um, as you say, one in 10 clubs could or will be going out of business because of um, COVID-19. And you have to remember this report was compiled for September, which was before here in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced further restrictions. And as we all know, there's a possibility that we could go into a second uh, national lockdown, in which case the the one in 10 actually would be a, a smaller number. So very concerned. And as Ollie said there, I mean, it is the life and soul of the community, especially in a footballing context. But I think the, the more dam damaging thing is it's not just about kids or adults wanting to play football. It's about the impact it has on members of the community who use the facilities. Yeah, in indeed. Uh, yeah, physical health, mental health. Um, Ollie, clearly, as David was saying, as you know, a, a crisis at grassroots level. But what about higher up? You know, FIFA has told us that you know, these, uh, these leagues could be losing up to some, something like $14 billion. But what about the wealthier clubs? Uh, have they got the the money in the pocket, if you will, to, to get through this? Well, that uh, depends very much uh, on uh, on the club and uh, its, uh, its uh, supporters, its uh, financiers. Uh, but if you look at the overall picture, it is uh, precisely as you say that uh, concerning the overall football economy, uh, we calculated or estimated uh, in, in spring and uh, early summer that uh, around one third of the football economy would be lost, uh, affected and lost uh, because of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. That's about uh, 14 billion dollars uh, out of uh, 45, uh, 50 billion dollars. Uh, that's a huge sum and huge hit uh, on on football. And it's maybe getting worse uh, because of the second wave to which uh, David uh, referred to. And that's why we have uh, engaged with this uh, COVID uh, relief fund uh, so that uh, each uh, member association, we have to be work with the member associations and through them so that uh, they can get uh, a solidarity grant of uh, one million dollars uh, per member association. We have tw 211 member associations in FIFA. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there is a special grant for women's football, half million dollars uh, per member association and uh, so far we have uh, paid uh, we have allocated i just checked the figures so we have paid uh, around uh, around 110 120 million us dollars uh, uh, already we have channeled uh, to through the member associations uh, two clubs and uh, and uh, uh, other elements of uh, football OK, well, on that note, David, I mean, in, in this current climate, I mean, do you think it's now even more important to ensure that funding filters down and I guess is distributed equally 
And, and are there other ways that the smaller struggling clubs can, well, survive financially or not? Well, Aaron, what, what Ollie's just said there is fantastic news in the sense that, that at least the, and I'm assuming, and forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I'm assuming that is more towards a professional game where the money will be going because, you know, FIFA have a very difficult position that they haven't got all the money in the world to save all the clubs. And when you go to your local uh, associations like the FA or maybe even the Premier League in, in the UK, they too, because of the amount of money being lost, haven't got enough money to supply the, the funds needed for grassroots. So I think everybody has their own part to play in this to take some ownership or responsibility and especially at grassroots level. You know, we're talking about small amounts of pounds in certain cases mm -hmm. where families can't afford it. And again, one of the things we report, it was about the beauty of an energy company asking or suggesting how we save money. If families um, and households can save £163 a year, that could go towards subs. Understanding, of course, in a very challenging economic time, that the first thing you need to do is obviously feed yourself and have a roof over your head. So if the families can do it at home, and if the likes of FIFA um, gratefully can do it on the on sort of the higher end of the scale, then I think between us, we can help these clubs survive. Myself, I, I'm getting involved with my local club. I'm going to do some kind of sponsorship. Um, I think volunteering and fundraising is an area which I would suggest any listeners here, because even in Finland, and I've got friends in Finland, um, and I know how difficult Finnish football is to uh, to survive in, in tough conditions. Even if you just contact your local grassroots club, ask them how you can help. And if there's a way that everyone can get together and I say it's better for the community, not just the, uh, the pathway to to uh, international football. Um, David, while we've got Ollie with us, let's just, let's just clarify. Ollie, I want to talk about women's football, which has seen a meteoric rise. But the, the, the funding that FIFA has, can FIFA help the grassroots level or that's just not possible at the moment? FIFA can, uh, to the extent that uh, the member associations uh, like uh, the FA uh, in England uh, or the Finnish FA or Sierra Leone FA decide to do so. And uh, I would very much uh, underline what uh, David said, that uh, we need uh, multidimensional activity, multifaceted activity and uh, all possible sources. And uh, let's all of us uh, also contribute uh, financially and uh, express our solidarity. I do the same with my, my own club, which uh, raised me. David has a more successful uh, football career than I had, but I have a longer one. I've played for <laughs> five years. Now, let so me far. ask you, Ollie, just very briefly, if you can, because I, I want to get back to David as well. But more than a billion, more than a billion people on the planet tuned in, didn't they, to FIFA, uh, the Women's World Cup back in, well, last year, 2019. A record audience. But could any of this progress, do you think, in women's football see a setback because of the, the huge dent in finances? I think uh, women's football is uh, particularly... Uh, vulnerable at this juncture and uh, that's why FIFA has uh, allocated uh, this uh, half million dollar per member association and uh, if I give you some examples uh, how the FAs uh, are using this uh, just to give you two or three examples. Just briefly uh, please yeah. Ireland is uh, using uh, uh, these funds to resume its uh, national league uh, including uh, Covid tests uh, and uh, uh, viral or video assisted referee. Mm. Mexico, the full FIFA funding, one and a half million euros, uh, will go to the Women's uh, League. Malawi, Malawi is, Malawi is using uh, the funds to directly assist uh, male and female players uh, all over the country with uh, allowances uh, and uh, uh, food parcels. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is quite some diversity of uh, how the funds are used, and it really depends on, on the member association. Sure. Um, Dave, can I ask you this? What do you think about the sky-high transfer uh, deals, I guess, th this season? Certainly, if you look at the Premier League, right, tens of millions of dollars. Is this excessive in this current climate? It's a business, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And, if, I mean, arguably, if the clubs can afford it, they can, they can afford it. And uh, I, I wouldn't see why, as I say, as a... As a an industry or a business that a Premier League club shouldn't be spending that kind of money. As I say, the, the difficulty is that a lot of people are looking at the likes of the Premier League, even FIFA, UEFA, uh, the FA in, in uh, the associations of each country. 
to bail out grassroots football and they just don't have that kind of money. But they still have to try and win leagues, um, qualify for European championships or whatever. Um, and therefore, the spending has to be done. What I have seen, and I'm, I haven't seen the statistics, but just by uh, observation, the number of transfers seem to be considerably less than before. Mm. So uh, the, the financial impact on the football, as you've rightly said at the beginning, we're talking hundreds of millions, if not billions of pounds. Um, you've seen that in the in the lower amount of transfers, especially when you start dropping down leagues. The clubs just don't have as much money as they had before. So rich clubs can afford to, to do big transfers. Fact of life. Yeah, but but Oli, look, I know this is not really your patch, but as part of the governing body, you know, should the profession be looking at savings such as maybe salary caps, players, uh, you know, players caps on players' salaries? Uh, some U.S. sports uh, apply salary caps, uh, as we know, and uh, salary caps uh, for football have been discussed uh, by various uh, stakeholders. Uh, but this is something that uh, ultimately goes beyond. Uh, scope of action of the COVID uh, relief uh, plan of, uh, of uh, FIFA. We may all have our views. Uh, in my view, and I, I said this already after the Bosman ruling 25 years ago, mm. I would welcome more solidarity and uh, redistribution within the football economy and community. But uh, I know that there are different views. Uh, so let the discussions uh, continue and uh, take these aspects uh, also into account. Indeed. Ollie and David, 11 minutes. How time flies. Hey, listen, both of you, we really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with everything. Both stay safe and well, and we'll check in with you soon.